Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'll be discussing uh, Oxygen OS 2.2.0 uh, This was the latest update uh, which recently hit the OnePlus 2 about uh, just over a week ago Now I did a video on live installation and show you guys when I got the update However in this video I'll be discussing uh, what has happened so far Are there any improvements and things that have been fixed and things that haven't been fixed So there are, I know on, on YouTube there's hardly anyone doing such videos but uh, this is probably going to be the most comprehensive and detailed in-depth uh, Oxygen OS 2.2.0 uh, update video and uh, most likely this will have part two parts this is, going be, this is going to be the first part and this part one of the video I'll be uh, doing discussing at all the change logs like I said whatever uh, officially came from OnePlus 2 and in part two of the video guys I'll be answering your questions now I might, I might be able to do all this in one video but I will let you know by the end of this video if this video has become, become becomes too long and then we will definitely have part two uh, of the video in which I will be answering your questions but if it's quick enough uh, I'll probably might discuss this in the same video anyways let's carry on guys I have lived with the update uh, the Oxygen OS 2.2 2.0 for over a week and I have uh, looked into every single aspect of the update so let's start off uh, first of all with uh, the dual sim preferences now this was uh, the, uh, the change part of the change log I'll show you in just a moment there we go this was the screenshot that I took uh, when the update hit the phone and the very first thing they said was fixed dual sim uh, preference selection issues and settings well I don't know what they fixed but from what I can see unfortunately this, the issues have not been fixed just as yet I have at the moment uh, two sim sims in this phone uh, and I'll show you in a moment uh, there you go in the sim card settings you can see I have card 1 and card 2 uh, both sims are actually on a 3 UK that's the network I have and they are both actually at the moment inside the phone but unfortunately the story is still the same uh, you can only use one sim at a time if you say have the card 1 enabled uh, you can only use uh, card 1 or sim 1 to make phone calls or to receive phone calls and messages and all that if you want to use the other sim you will have to disable the sim card one and then use sim card two so you can't have both of them uh, activated at the same time to me personally uh, lots of people out there who travel on long trips and they want to have carry just one phone I think this is still potentially a problem now just to uh, validate my point I have here a Nexus 5x this also has another sim inside what I'll do is I will make a phone call um, use, uh, using the Nexus 5X on my uh, SIM card, number one SIM card, and then I'll try calling the second SIM card at the same time to see if that works. As you can see on the top right corner here, um, it is showing two SIMs, but the other SIM, the second SIM, has got no signals, which goes to show that what I'm saying is absolutely right. You cannot have both SIMs on standby at both the t at the same time. So in order to use uh, any of those, you'll have to disable one and then use the other. So let me use. Uh, my Nexus 5X and let's call first of all uh, one of the numbers and see if uh, the phone call uh, comes through as you can there you go as you can see I've put the speaker phone on on the Nexus 5X and the call is actually uh, coming through so this is on card 1 as you can see it says card 1 calling okay now I'm gonna start uh, make the same phone call onto my card 2 and then see what happens I'll put the speaker on my phone you'll hear a beep sound that means it's gone to voicemail there you go so the message the voicemail beep came up and the phone has gone to a voice message I'll quickly show you here there you guys you can see it's on voicemail and it's not ringing so um, now let's do the same for the other sim let's disable uh, sim number one there we go boom deactivating and then you will see in sim successfully uh, deactivated and now it says data services will be switched to sim 2 and as you can see sim 2 has just now uh, come up now let me try calling um, sim 2 if I can first of all let me do this okay there we go so I'm now I'm calling sim 2 and you should see a call coming up from saying sim on a call in card 2 there you go so as you can see the call is coming on to card 2 now now also as you can see the the first sim is now disabled but now let me also enable it like we did last time so let's have them both activated and see if it says successfully activated means if the other sim can come online as well 
I did I did disable this just to get the second sim running but as you can see as soon as I put the sim number one uh, back to activation still uh, this goes into the same position as was the case with sim number two now I'm going to start calling sim one again and see if it goes through mm -hmm. take your call right now just leave your message after the tone there you go as you heard the voicemail it cannot take the message and it goes into voicemail straight away so the same one actually went into voicemail straight away unfortunately I thought this issue was solved but from what I can see from my own personal experience guys uh, the same dual sim issue has hasn't been solved and unfortunately you'll have to um, you know toggle between the two sim now if you keep it keep it like that you will uh, probably have uh, a lot more battery drain than you will have the phone in regular so what I'll suggest is uh, please disable one of the sims or if not what you can do is um, you can also I think if you change the mobile letter preferences you can put into sim 1 if you do card 1 or card Part two, it will also activate the respective sim at the same time. But the easiest way, obviously, would be to disable one of the sims and use the other one. So, as far as I'm concerned, officially, the dual sim uh, preference settings are still there. There's still a problem, and it hasn't been solved. Okay, guys, enough spent time spent on this now. Let's now talk about the battery life. Now, this is one thing I get often asked a lot about. How is the battery life, Jay? Well, in my experience so far, the battery life has improved a little bit from the previous version, but not as much as I thought it would be like uh, giving me... Uh, I used to give me six hours of the screen on time. My latest last reading with the battery, I used the phone pretty much all day. As you can see, this is the screenshot I took. I was on Wi-Fi, um, a bit of 3G, 4G as well. And but mostly it was on Wi-Fi. 3G was hardly used anyway. But uh, after using it for Facebooking, Instagram, YouTube, and general bits and bob, I was able to squeeze out five hours and two minutes of screen on time. And now those of you who follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Google, and all that, I've been posting. I've been posting uh, all these screenshots, and that's probably the best way to follow me if you want up to dates, uh, up to information on the OnePlus 2. So the battery has improved. Previously, with the older version, I was only getting around a four to four and a half hours of screen on time it was hardly reaching four and a half but it was mostly around the four hour mark four to quarter past four but now i'm happy to report that you can squeeze up to five hours of screen on time and the battery was down to four percent but this is with one sim only guys remember if you're going to be using two sims the battery then will be more and also uh, the sot will also get affected so with one sim you are bound to get a good screen on time with wi-fi with 4g you most likely to, you most likely will get around three and a half hours of screen on time okay so the battery life has improved i've also been uh, uh, putting the standby battery drains on the one plus two guys i don't know if you um, if you follow me on on social media or not but if you've been following me on social media guys i've been like i said putting all these uh, screenshots on my social media and like i said the other day i on on uh, 29th of december at 5 25 i took a screenshot and left the phone on 100 by the way it was plugged two hours before so take this as a 3 25 not 5 25 in the morning and then um about eight o'clock uh, I was able to squeeze out it, it only went on down to eight percent so it wasn't that too bad actually to be honest um, let me just have a look uh, 29th of December yeah so the battery didn't was not too bad it was all right but like i said in in in, in the latest uh, uh, update the standby times have significantly improved there were people complaining to me before in the past there were lots of battery drain but i can tell you show you now that uh, the battery drain on standby is uh, significantly improved and you won't have that severe kind of battery drains that you had in the older versions now also one thing which i've been often asked by many people is about the usb otg support now Again, um, 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 unfortunately, uh, it's not working from what I can see. Um, they have, they did fix it. They, they did say in the update. I'll show you in the screenshot that it was fixed. Unfortunately, it hasn't been fixed. There we go. It says added NTFS and XFAT support for o OTG. Now I have here with me my USB um, OTG uh, stick. Um, this is the on-the-go cable, and this is my USB stick, and this is on XFAT as well. FAT32, FAT, the same thing. Unfortunately, the OnePlus 2 is not picking up. I will show you live right now. I in fact have two different kinds of cables. I have here a Type C USB cable, guys. So from one end, this is the Type C cable, as you can see here. So this is the Type C, as you can see, and this is the normal USB end. And then also, I have an other USB um, OTG cable along with this as well. Now this is the normal regular uh, USB guys as you can see and this 
obviously won't plug into the OnePlus 2 so for that reason just to make sure that uh, this cable was faulty so I thought I'll try another cable as well I have shown you this cable before in my previous videos as well so I'm going to be using this uh, all key converter there you go guys as you can see this is the all key converter one end is type C and the other one is uh, the, the regular USB so I'll plug this in to this as well and I will be testing this along the same time so there we go as you can see so we have now two cables ready to be tested um, let's first of all try the type C regular USB cable uh, so that we can see if that works so let's plug the USB thingy into this side of the cable and let's bring the one plus two here and see if that works so this is the type C guys I'm going to the type C of uh, one plus two there we go let me just bring the lights a bit more close so you guys can see a bit more clearly okay there we go alright so now this is the USB type C plugged into the OnePlus 2 and as you can see on the screen nothing has come up now just to verify that somebody also asked me on YouTube Jay did you actually take that option of USB OTG um, reading I did actually last time but this time again I will show you guys let's get into storage and let's go right at the bottom where it says here OTG storage enable reading external storage via OTG also I have enabled uh, settings and also went into the Developer option the other day, yes, and I've also had the USB debugging option, even though this is used primarily for connecting to a PC. But uh, I have enabled it just in case if that wasn't uh, enabled. But so far, nothing has come up, guys, as you, as you just saw on the storage. Let's go back into storage again. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, storage. There we go. So only the internal memory comes up here, guys, but no USB coming up. Also, I installed uh, the ES File Explorer, which is one of the best file managers on the Play Store. And just to cross check, I wanted to make sure that even this was showing up as nothing. So you go here, tap on the left hand side, go into local, and it should be coming up here somewhere at the bottom. And as you can see, there's nothing there. So, from what I can understand, guys, there is, um, oh, it's come up here. Wow, this is nice. I've just seen it now. That's wonderful. So it's actually supporting. My apologies, guys. I've just noticed it just now. And you can see at the bottom here, it says USB OTG. So this probably is supporting, from what I can understand. Um, no, it's not. This is basically not the SD card. This is the actual internal memory because my SD card, sorry, my, my USB OTG is basically a, a 32 gig memory stick and this is not a 64 gig. Whereas this is most likely uh, the OnePlus 2 is a uh, USB um, the internal storage memory so apologize for that guys and like I said earlier I'm going to revert back to my statement again it does not support OTG just as yet it should have come up there in, in, in the bottom here and on the SD card bit but it hasn't come up here so now just to verify I know um, I said a few things here and it must have confused you but just to verify does it actually work on, on any other phone I also have here with me the Nexus 5X guys and this same UT type C cable works on the Nexus 5X straight away there you go I've plugged it in as soon as I plug it in you will see there will a message will come up telling you that the USB is working there we go as you can see here guys it says Kingston USB drive for transferring photos and media it's, a, it's come up straight away once you tap in it the default uh, marshmallow manager comes up and all my media and stuff can be seen here also I installed the same uh, ES file explorer on the Nexus 5 X well, X as well so that I could give you guys a clear indication of how this works okay so let's go back up here and uh, here on the local as you can see there's at the bottom it says USB 1002 so this is actually the USB stick that's, that, that got picked up so let's tap into this guys there we go and it's asking for a new update we'll cancel that for now okay um, it is asking me again and again don't worry I'll update anyway okay so there we go so this is the Kingston one uh, the memory stick guys as you can see all my stuff and everything is here and you can see everything straight away without any issues and the, when we went on the same thingy on the one plus two it wasn't working now uh, in order to eliminate the possibility of the USB type C there have been lots of news in the media on the internet about you know uh, uh, certain USB types which are not compliant with uh, the one plus two so in order to el eliminate that possibility that's the reason I uh, got another cable here like I said guys it was the normal 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 regular USB cable and that's why I'm using this adapter so that I can use the same memory stick on the one plus two using a different cable and we'll see if that works okay so let's do the same again plug this into the one plus two again guys as let's go into settings now uh, obviously it takes a few seconds so we'll give it a few seconds we'll wait and see how it goes okay now get into storage and again guys internal memory is visible that option is still ticked off 
and there's nothing on the USB stick on, on, on the phone showing about the USB stick also let's get into ES file explorer and settings here go into local and as you can see there's nothing here at all so USB OTG support as far as I can tell by using two different cables is not still supported on the OnePlus 2 I was very disappointed because I was looking forward to this one unfortunately it's not the case as I've shown in the video so the USB OTG is actually not working on the OnePlus 2 okay now also they have added this hide search bar under settings so if you go into settings here guys and right on top here you can see the magnifying glass so you can type here and then type say if you want to go into the Wi-Fi quickly you can use your Wi-Fi and all the related Wi-Fi stuff will come up like Wi-Fi on during sleeping and stuff and so you looking into settings and you know looking for different different options you can do that say if you want to go into display options you type in display there we go and it goes into your display settings straight away no issues so this has also been added okay also um, the screen temperature well, it, was, it was a very you know um, different kind of change log it did confuse me when I actually read it for the first time if you see it says a screen temperature can now be adjusted from quick settings so it was a bit uh, you know I was a bit confused <clears throat> but what that actually means is that if you pull down the notification panel you can see on the left hand side <clears throat> excuse me you could only adjust brightness before now you have another option here so if you tap on this option again you see a small cloud this is basically the same as when you go into uh, settings and you go into your display settings and here you can change the color balance so when it says screen temperature what that means is you can change the color balance which is like keep it light keep it blue keep it dark or whatever you want to do it so the tone of the colors will change on the screen instead of you going into the setting and display you can now straight away go into here and the drop down menu and notification panel and you tap it once it goes to brightness and you tap it again it goes to the color contrast and all that kind of stuff so this has also been added okay uh, also um in terms of um, uh, wallpapers, there was also an update about the wallpapers. I think in there as well. Let's have a quick look. Um, where, was it? where was it? Where was it? There we go. So um, in here, no. Okay, there was a third screenshot. I think. Yeah. Um, general uh, holiday wallpaper. There you go. That's the one. So they have added some uh, Christmas wallpapers. So if you tap on the blank screen and you go into wallpapers. Um, there were quite a few actually added this time around, including some Chris uh, Christmas uh, festive uh, wallpapers as well. Quite a few here, in, in some new wallpapers here, and also some festive wallpapers uh, showing the Christmas bit there as well. So a few wallpapers have also been added, especially this one where it's showing you all the Android uh, different versions in the past, like cupcakes and donuts and Froyo, gingerbread, Kit Kat, all of them, uh, they've been added. It looks pretty nice actually. I like this wallpaper personally. It's a very nice wallpaper so this is uh, has also been added now in general uh, talking about other stuff in the update let's have a quick look again and see what else have we got left here security patches are up to date no problem this was something which Google discussed uh, and they said a few months ago that all phones should get regular security patches to keep your phone secured so it has the latest December uh, security patch installed on the phone okay I think one thing we missed was the fixed Google camera photosphere and panorama bugs now I haven't been using the camera as aggressively guys I'm not a photosphere on a or a panorama shoot kind of guy but um, when I tested it um, a while back I never had any bugs or issues anyway but I'm sure those of you who like to uh, use the photosphere and the panorama features on the camera I'm sure whatever was there it has now been fixed Apart from that guys, um, in general, the performance of the phone and the bugs, I think overall, uh, I often get uh, this question as well under the comment section, then, Jay, how is the overall performance of the of the uh, OnePlus 2 with 4 gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 810? Well, the performance has slightly improved from before, yes, I can tell you. The overall responsiveness of the phone is nice, uh, the way you move across in the menus and browsers and stuff. So things seem to be improving slowly, surely, but I still personally think that they can actually improve um, a bit more on this as well because the phone has got 4 gigs of RAM and Snapdragon 810 you do expect a bit more but uh, I've, like I said I've, ever since I got the phone there have been various updates and I've seen the improvements every now and then it's improving with every iteration and hopefully it will get to a point where uh, it will be as fast as say a, a Galaxy Note 5 or a Nex Nexus 6P the Nexus 6P is apparently faster than this small little things like when you tap on settings it takes a second or two before the menu comes up small little things even though I know you can change the animation 
configurations and you can you know go into the developer options and do this and that but this should also be default you don't have to you know fiddle with the settings you shouldn't you shouldn't have to do that they should do it automatically and make your experience as smooth and as fluid as possible so guys the videos got too long now uh, so nearly 20 minutes so i'll probably uh, finish this off right here and i will do another video part two guys a continu continuation of the oxygen os 2.2.0 and in that video i will uh, answer the questions which i've been asked in the last couple of weeks about this update so i'll definitely come back guys uh, like always if you like my video please uh, give it a thumbs up uh, any questions uh, please feel free to ask me in the comment section guys and i will see you in part two of this video thank you